Okay. So what, what I'm going to do then, as well as have a cup of tea, is I'm going to go back to these. So we've developed our character a little bit. Okay, we've, this is one of the characters. Developed him up a little bit and explored roughly what he's wearing and roughly his body type. Then we did a few other studies here that we then took to the inking stage and then also demonstrated how to add color and tone using Photoshop for that. So now what I'll do is I'll use this as a reference and I'll go back to my drawing stage Okay, back to my page of drawings. Oh, it's not focusing. It's better. Go back to my page of drawings and, um, you know, work on these. You can see they're still really rough. It's somewhere between a planning sketch and a rough sketch. There's some information, pretty good, but I need some more information on some of these parts of the drawing. So I think what I'll do is I'll get, a, get my light box out and I'll put it on my light box and I'll work through there because that's going to allow me to, you know, get much, um, oh, what's going on there? Uh, the end of it, is it? Yeah, it's just going to allow me to reach you know, see through it, okay? So that if I turn that down, that should be pretty clear now. So depending on this is the thing you want to balance if you do have a light box or if you're working on a window, um, you know, you the light on the inside, if it's too bright, it can make it a bit harder to see the light that's coming through, right? But if there's not enough light, it, it can be harder. And also in this case, I've got another drawing on the back here that's interfering. So I might just quickly erase some of this guy here, okay? he's getting in the way. Yeah. Do you that? So all trying to make things easier for myself. You know, there's something about a sketch like this too. There's a lot of life in a quick sketch. You know how we did that with the human figure folio. We always talking about trying to capture that life and movement. There's always a lot of life in a sketch. In fact it's it's often one of, one of the things I learned doing kids books a lot was trying to capture some of that beautiful life that I get into a sketch in the finished drawing. And it, it took me a long time to figure out a way to do that. And, and so the life that's here, even though it's rough, in some aspects, the life that's in this sketch, I really want to try to get as much of that into the finished drawing as possible. So that's why I want to use as many techniques as I can to, to, to do that. So having a good clean um, oh god having a good clean um, image coming through there is going to help me. I've just destroyed this piece of paper. Anyway. Grab a sheet. Just something large enough to sit over there. All right, and I might even get rid of this just out of the way. It's just a distraction. So I just want to focus on this guy. So I'll get a bit of sticky tape.
I wonder how many of you are using are going to use digital compared to analog, you know, by hand. There, there doesn't seem to be many as many of you this semester as last semester that had a tablet. Oh yeah, I mean, it does, you know, but I actually, I don't want to sound like an old fashioned person but at all, but I think you're missing out if you don't learn to draw with paper and pencil. Um, there's nothing wrong with using technology, but if you don't experience drawing analog, I think you're missing out. Um, it's the tactile experience of touching a paper and also the kind of risk involved when you use ink on paper that's kind of a bit more exciting. So there's something, there's value there that you can put in balance with the, the convenience and the advantages that are there with digital. There's many advantages of digital for sure but I don't think you're missing out not having a tablet all right so again if I turn this up I can see more of the surface if I turn it down I can see more of the light coming through so you just find the balance you need given the stage of drawing you're at pencil. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use my grey pencil or normal pencil you could say. Well what's normal? God there's so many different types of pencils. I'm going to get a sort of a 4B if I've got one. <clears throat> I've got one somewhere. It's just a matter of finding it. 2B, that might even do. Yeah, I could use a 2B. 2Bs are good for um, drawing like this, you know, where it's, it's a bit more about precision to some degree. Um, the only trouble with this paper I'm finding it's actually quite good for ink, but it's it's hard to rub out the pencil. It's not really getting rid of it completely. So it's it's because I'm using. You know what I should do? I should grab some. Um, some photocopy paper. That might actually work better. Let me do that. Let me just grab some photocopy paper. Photocopy paper is really no good for inking, but it's actually quite good for pencil. That's what I've been using for most of the semester to do drawings, human figure drawings with, right? Uh, <clears throat> and it's just a bit easier to erase. Oh, 
Oh, I hate sticky tape the way it gets gets lost. Yeah, I suppose over time you just learn things, don't you? And then you can just practice them. You learn shortcuts and It's still not erasing very well either, to be honest. Oh well. It doesn't matter because I'm going to use it as a. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean. Okay, so that's fine. Good. Turn that down one, I reckon. Leave it about there. What I might do to begin with, I've never done this, but on this sketch, but I really should be working a little bit more carefully to the correct proportions. And this is quite, this is a bit smaller than the actual page would be, right? So I could be working larger. Doesn't really matter. I used to do this, I used to um, enlarge my sketches on a photocopier and then to get them to the right size because it's normally good to work a little bit larger than you need because you can always reduce them and if you reduce a drawing it'll look better because you'll it'll look it'll look like there's more detail so if I wasn't stuck right now at my desk I'd probably just go to the photocopier and enlarge this 20% and then put that enlargement under here and then I could work from that but presuming or just working with that. I'm going to draw some slightly neater boxes here just so that it's a little bit more precise. Just use the edge of this paper to give me a straight edge. Oh, that wasn't quite right, was it? Get over to about there. Yeah, so this is another little shortcut. You know, the piece of A4 paper has um, has a perfect right angle corner. So if you're trying to draw a rectangle with square edges, you just grab a piece of paper. I'm not even sure if this ratio is right. Let me just see. So that's. 16 by 21 so if I make that um, if I add one third that'll be 5.3 7 that'll be 28 by 21.3 so yeah it's a little bit I've got some more height if I need it so what I might do is just add a bit more space down the bottom here this is if I want it to be an A4 page, which I've suggested most of you should work to. Alright, so that rectangle now that I've drawn is the correct shape, but it's just smaller than an A4. So there's an A4, if I lay it underneath you can see, if I line up the corners. Right, so the same, it's it's the same shape. Um, roughly the same shape as the A4. Could actually go a little bit. Did you know this? If you draw a diagonal through a rectangle, it'll it'll um, you know I can actually afford this to come all the way down to there. So my my um, rectangle could go lower than that to about here. So that rectangle by now is actually a four in proportion. 
or ratio. Which gives me a little bit more space on my page if I need it. Right, so what I could do is I could give one of these drawings more space. I don't think I need more space up here, but I think this frame, right, could do with more space. See, it's a bit tight. So what I'll do is I'll start with this frame where it is. So I'll just draw that one. That's about 5.9. Oops, no. Let's change that. Let's make it 5.7. So I'm just leveling up the squares, right? And I could even add a little space between. I'd, I haven't really figured out or given any thought to what I would do with my gaps between frames. So I might just now add a little gap here. Make this right in the middle. Because I've got, I've got two frames that actually fall on that centre line. So just sketch them in there. And there's one I think there. And just leaving a bit of a space, a couple of mils. It's about three millimetres I think. All right, see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of building up my little Now this one this one can have more space so I can drop that down at least another almost 15 mils. So let's bring it down to about there. So that's about 12 centimeters from the top. So this will be the bottom of my main horizontal, the shooting frame, right? It's the, mo it's the most dramatic moment in the scene, I think. Okay, and then I'll be able to shift that up a bit. Might as well do it now. So that'll be, that'll take up that space. So now this one can sit about there and then that's pretty good I need as much space as I can for him so I'll bring this up let's make it 4.5 4.6 And a little gap. Doesn't have to be super accurate, really. Okay, and there's another frame over here. I'll just draw him in there. And then, oh yeah, there's another one there as well. Yep, so that goes straight through. And then there's one there, a little frame there. And then that's mini frame there. This gentleman. And then we've got a mini frame here. All right, so that is my page a little bit more carefully laid out. Oh, that seems too dark, doesn't it? Let's open that up a bit. All right, so that's my plan, my frame now. Okay, so I'll start with the first one.
Okay, this feels right to me now. You know. Look at that. Okay, now I've got my reference. Okay, so that's going to help me with that. It's going to help me with that. It's going to help me with that. I'll just make them the same model. Doesn't matter. <laughs> and um, okay, now I'm a happy man. So perspective. I quite like roughly the composition, so I'm not I'm not too fussed about that. So I might just base it on that. So perspective requires, you know, a vanishing point. So let's put the vanishing point sort of about where the guy is. That might be nice. And then that means that all these lines are going to have, are going to sort of head towards him. Not him, but the point behind his head on the horizon. So the fence, foot, the, the edge of the road here. just gives us um, a point to direct everything towards. So that's pretty good. Uh, I could even put the edge of the box in, right? So if I've got a box sitting about here, then we could have a little edge of it showing using that point of perspective. there so that's just going to give us a bit of you know kind of accuracy in terms of perspective all right and then let's pop the back of the wheels a bit further back than here that would be a good thing to do and I'm going to draw a little perspective rectangle on the ground just to help me position the car. You could think of it as a shadow, cast shadow. Uh, it's just going to help me get a sense of how big that car, how much occup how much of the ground it will take up, you know, approximately that. And then I'm going to pop in my arrow again. Um, I'm going to follow that line of perspective again on the arrow. Again, this is my vanishing point. And it's kind of nice, I've got the arrow now, because it's pointing towards the vanishing point, everything's pointing towards the man in the car. Our, our protagonist, our, the guy who's going to die in a minute, everything's pointing towards him. Now the front of this car is sloping down. So it won't actually follow that line directly. It'll, it'll come up on a more of an angle down. Um, if I go out and have a look at those other shots, I really need a screen grab of you. So I don't lose it. Okay, grab you now, screen grab. And then I can go back out. God, my internet is rubbish. Oh, okay, no, the front doesn't slope down too much. Okay, so I could actually use the line of perspective. And then I'm just looking at the drawing here. It, it does curve a little bit. And then there's a bit of a straight bit. And then the light's about here. And then the bumper bar sticks out angles down and curves back around a bit okay and then this bit probably comes back a bit more comes right down under the bumper bar comes up and then it runs back almost in a straight line 
for a while. And then there's a little badge here. And then the wheels are quite small in relation to that. So maybe about here. And then they would do a little cylinder. Remember our training from the first folio? Sorry, ellipse. Ellipses will help us draw the wheels here. If I just keep turning this off, I get a bit of a sense of how it's looking. Let's drop that down a bit more, maybe. See, that looks so much more like a real car now than that one. Just that little bit of information. Good. Keep going. Um, the back of it. I've got my rear view here. As a screenshot. Hello, Birdie. Okay, so it's quite smooth. Um, it's got really fat wheels, which is great. It's got quite a low cabin. Okay, so if I look here, I want my wheels to be back about here. And then I want to Bring in the bottom of the car about there. Maybe a little bit higher than that. Maybe about here. And then, if I, I've got this kind of shape. And it goes up on a slight angle, it seems. Just go back to the... Yeah. <clears throat> hmm, good. Gee, this reference is really useful. So if I make the height of the car there, which is good, I reckon that's about two thirds. Back to my other one. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a small cabin, really. Okay, and then there's lines across here. And there's a shape about halfway. Then there's the tail lights, big wheels, and then we've got two little seats. A couple of mirrors. All right, let's have a look. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a bit easier to see without the light on. So I can make that a bit wider there. And this is just a lot of a lot of bumper bar, really. And thick, nice big thick tyres. I think these tyres, these wheels are too close. I need to move them aside more. That's better. All right, and then just want to pop him in. Now he's on the wrong side of the car, but it doesn't matter. Steve's his arm stretched out. And then this gentleman.
That's pretty good. So that's probably all the information I need, really. There's a, there's a strong line. Sort of like that. That's that's pretty good. Uh, if you can see that. <clears throat> oh my! Focus is everywhere, isn't it? Sorry about that. It doesn't focus well when there's nothing in high contrast. But anyway, you can see that's coming together, right? It's so that compared to that. Big difference, isn't it? Just by slowing down a bit and taking care with perspective and reference. All right, we'll keep going for the last few minutes. And uh, I'll just try to finish this off, okay? Nothing wrong with using the ruler when you've got architectural features like we have here. So I might just bring that in. Just for some of these shiny bits. You know, I I really should get a photo of a toll booth. You know what I mean? To to get this better. But um But uh, we're not doing that today. Just a sense of perspective there. I hope that's focusing for you. Yeah, I quite like that. You don't need much more than that in the frame. Again, the frames, the information in each drawing should only be enough as much as you need. You don't want to overload the viewer with too much information. Like a little cloud might be nice. And then just, I might build up the texture of this fence. And it's probably going to be a sort of a chicken wire fence. So I might just do a... Try to give a sense of that. I'm kind of radiating it a bit to give a sense of the perspective. Yeah, that's not bad. All right. Maybe a little um, cigarette butt cindering in the floor on the ground. <laughs> All right, cool. Done. So the next one. Um, you know, we're, we're going back. Oh, that's right. We're doing this one instead, aren't we? So I've got to flip this one in here instead. No problem. I need my scissors, which I think are in the drawer. I won't grab those. I'll just use this. So I'll just tear that out of the picture. And then we'll just stick him in. Something like that. All right, guys, so um, probably time to wrap up. Um, you know, just keep going. Obviously, that's all there is to say. Um, I'll talk to you on Monday about your cover designs. The idea, really, I think, that's going to suit most of you is to pick one of your drawings and to somehow, you know, just 
you know, it, it wants to be perhaps the strongest one or uh, no, not the strongest one. It should be one of the drawings that are sort of tell a story, but don't give the whole story away. So which one, you know, this is probably giving too much away to use that drawing. This is the wrong shape. You know, this might be a good drawing to go on the cover or this one. Now it doesn't mean you don't, you know, you might need to redraw it, you might need to enlarge it, you might need to add some other information, but you know, the example I showed you on the computer where I took that, this drawing here, that could, could actually make quite a fine, you know, aspects of a fine cover illustration. Just something to paint the picture of the action inside. Hope you don't mind. The sick of the sound of my voice. I've got a little, um, <laughs> I've added a little cigarette butt. Can you see it there? Smoking as if this guy's, you know what I could do? I could almost have it flying through the air. Like it's just come through the air. Flick. <laughs> I like the idea that, you know, normally when you get rid of a cigarette, not that I smoke, but in the movies, they always get rid of it when they're about to do something. So you see this flick because they're pulled up. Could even have a squeal sound for the, for the brakes. You know, this is how comics do sound effects. They have just little words. <clears throat> so... You know, it's kind of letting us know that this guy's about to do some damage. <coughs> so I've stuck in the chain, the, the revised version of this. Remember that? So that's there. Um, I need to turn that off actually so I can see better. Hopefully you can see all right. I think I won't open his mouth here so much. I'll have it smaller because I don't want him to be too similar to this other drawing. So what do I need to change? I don't think I can line up this horizon, which I thought would be nice. So I think, I think I might line up one of the lines though, just for fun, with the edge of the road. Just so there's a kind of a continuity there. In fact, yeah, I didn't really have the horizon marked into that one. Yeah, that's good. So the horizon's becoming the road here. All right, now I want the side view of this car to help me. There we go. Good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it, but that's my that's my reference. up here maybe <clears throat> and 
and then I just want a little bit of the car sticking out. I don't want the whole car visible yet. Uh, although I could have most of it because we won't see it all. Okay, well let's give me at least half of it. So put the bottom of it about there. I hope my head's not in the way. A wheel about there or here maybe okay so that's the front that's the base you might just see the second wheel starting and then that's about there Just behind there, that goes up. Scoops back down. So sort of almost straight. And then that comes down, that pops out. It's a bit long, Shane. So why don't you shorten that? Oh yeah, I can have it on a slight angle. So give a slight sense of perspective here. See the second wheel at the back. So this car would probably carry four passengers, four men. Not not easily, but it would fit them. So. <clears throat> the bonnet there all right good car door mirror um, I think we'll have the door closed they've gotten out and they're just standing up so there's that car now the other guy's car I'm just gonna make a bit of a bomb So we'll use the same line because they're oh no they're to the left of him aren't they so he's a bit closer to us so we'll bring him his car a little bit lower in the picture to show that he's a bit closer and I'll put the booth about here I reckon and the booth Oh, you know what I've done? I've made um, I've made the car the same. That's all right. That's fine. So the booth needs to be about there, and then his car is sticking a little bit out from behind it. So he's about here. So that's about there, swoops down, does that, comes down, comes up, comes over and down. Your little bumper bar, little mirror, something like that. Now 
There you go. So he's he's right here, reaching forward. Guys in there somewhere. A little doorway maybe here. All right, and then we've got the sign. Somehow going over him. <clears throat> Be a pretty big pole, I think. Up to about here. It's <clears throat> a couple of lights or something out there. All right, so that's pretty much it. A little bit of a, a horizon line maybe here or here. Low cloud. Mexico. So in the foreground, <clears throat> we have that little arrow on here. Just for continuity. And now these characters <clears throat> standing up. I haven't actually designed them yet. That's a problem. I'm going to have to design these guys. I think I'll put some sort of a... <clears throat> No, I won't have hats on them. I won't have hats on them. So I'll just make them little heads. Okay, oh, I'm standing up. With rifles. One guy can be leaning on the car. That's two of them. Um, I really need someone on this side. So let me put one here, squatting down. We'll make it we'll make it four guys. One here. That's three, and one more, maybe a fourth guy just up the back here. 
or maybe over here. This is going to change my bigger drawing a little bit. So I think I imagine more than four. I suppose I could have more than four still. I could just imagine there are two cars. That would be okay. I'm going to block this other gun if I put him there though. That's not a good spot. I think I might just have three there. It's going to look clearer. There you go. Now I might move that cloud because that's just in the way. We just want to clear. We want these sort of bullets almost to be. In fact, I've aimed their guns too high. I want them to aim a little bit. Right. Like that. Oh, should I have them shoot? No, you know what? I shouldn't shoot them here. I think they're just standing up, getting ready. So there's no gunfire here. Just standing up. Click, click. I'll just do click, click. Click, 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 ready to go, and then, poof. Okay. <clears throat> and he just notices it. I don't really like this diagonal shape. Uh, what can I do? Um, I've kind of lost the fence too, haven't I? Oh well. Um, what can I do with him? You know what? I'm going to change this right now. I'm going to change this all together. I'm going to do a super close up just of his eyes. Let's just do his eyes. All right, so let's just plan this a little bit. So I just want a kind of a huh? moment. So we could do on that side, and then we go to this side. So we need to be on this side of him. So we could be on this side of him. In the front, looking back that way. So if we enlarge that bottom of the mirror. could be there. And then his eyes. If his head's we're looking down. Too close to the mirror, Shane. He's too close to the mirror. I think we have to not show the mirror. Can we do that?
if I show him looking up and we show them behind that might communicate the mirror even if I don't show the mirror no I need to see just the edge of it I just need to see so he's on the left of the car he's looking that way I just need to put it there that might work <clears throat> Yeah, I like this. It's a it's an extreme close up. All right, good. So now the mirror. Let's bring the mirror down here. Just the corner of it. Shane. He looks like that. <laughs> His eyes are a little bit googly. This one's all right. That one's pretty good. I think I need to draw his eyes first and then draw the mirror. And I'm intentionally making his eyeballs look slightly cross-eyed because when we look at something up close, <clears throat> our eyeballs sort of come together. Mm, 
He looks weird. I, I just, <clears throat> I think I needed to do a bigger drawing of him to get him right. Okay, that's a bit better. I think if I do that, shift that over a bit, and I just have the sense of the mirror being there. That'll do, just right there. So he's looking at that. There's his hair kicking back. And then out here we see, what these guys see. Might make it on an angle too. So his world's a bit tilted here. That's his window. You know, because I'm working, trying to work on my finished drawing, finished planning drawing, I want to make sure 
I get it as pretty, you know, as good as I can. The only problem now is I'm leaving a kind of a, oh, you know what I could do? Hmm, there's an idea. I could bring the mirror up into that shot. Why don't I just put the mirror up in here? So it can be sort of bursting through. Just so that corner's filled up a bit. Now the light's coming from this side as I recall, so I'm going to put a shadow maybe over most of him. Okay, and then out the back, at the window, the upholstery, you know, the little glassy thing there. Edge of the frame, edge of their car. All right. So that's the change. I think that's much better. I still don't really like this being stuck back here, right? It's, I should have moved it all further over. So what I might do when I do my final art is I might leave that and just drag this across here more so it's further over here and that's going to I think balance this and it's kind of cool he's kind of looking here which is also looking here yeah I like it I think that's better than it was and this could possibly be 
shadow. Just make that dark to really have him pop there. Nice. Cool. Alright, onwards and upwards. Okay, so now this is... I actually haven't really done enough planning here to end up with a good drawing in the other one. So I might just come in here now and work this a bit more. Um, so this car... I've got a pretty good sense of what it looks like now. Um, <clears throat> I just need to rework this whole drawing, I think. I think I want to go up and look down, otherwise it's going to be too much the same point of view. So I won't see a horizon, we'll just see the whole car. It'll be in perspective. Um, maybe that could be the base of it. So the top of it, maybe. Let's sort of start there. It's kind of got that shape at the back. Mm, that number plate. Tail lights. Quite long. And a big boot. And then a kind of a small cabin. But we're seeing the roof as well. So the roof is then continues forward in white and this will sort of run up to there with perspective yeah that's not bad I can see that a bit better now uh, boot sort of goes there windows kind of curvy Wraps around, wraps around here as well. All right, so that is pretty good for my car and a couple of big tires sticking out down here. Exhaust pipe about here. Shadow. I think going off in this direction from memory. And our man, you probably see one seat there, one seat there. He's on this side. His arms up maybe. And then it's just sort of glass and stuff. Okay, so now these gentlemen, how many and where and what, what, what? I think I need one guy, a big guy dirty in the frame over here. So he's sort of more up the back. Maybe he's got a, maybe he's got a, he's got a gun, definitely, but maybe he's got a rifle. No, they don't hold it up to their eyes, they just hold it down at their waist, don't they? Like men. So it could be a shotgun. Maybe 
see something like that. So if he's sort of big there, and I can have a bit more depth, don't forget that Shane. So we've got a bit more depth there, that means I could have a guy about here. I could just make it three. Got another guy here dirty in this frame. He could hold, have a rifle as well. And then I could just put right in the middle maybe. Nah, too symmetrical. I think I need to have two of them. So let me put one here and one about here. Nah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. What if I just had two? Would that work? That could work. Let's try something else. Let's try one guy here. Quite big. Sort of just the back of his head maybe. And then another guy over here, sort of slightly smaller. So if we're above, he could be higher and more in profile. So again, I think I'm going to have to do another little planning drawing. And just remember the height that I've got here. I think what I'll do, I'm going to put it off centre. I've had it symmetrical, but I think that's the problem. It's too symmetrical. So I'm going to bring this guy over. And with him there, if I put the car off centre, it gives me room for these two guys. So I bring this guy in about here. This guy could be a baldy. Something like that. Which gives me all this space over here for this guy. And I think I need reference to actually help me um, with them holding their guns and stuff. Um, let's make him a bit smaller. Face 
seen that one, right? Oh, I can make them all bald. That'd be funny. The bald killers. Um, more on the side for this guy. Oh, I know. There we go. Just have his hand down like that. Sort of shooting through there. This guy's arms are down, I reckon. I've got to be able to see his gun, so... Take that in front of him, I suppose, right there. Nice big double barrel shotgun. And this guy... his shoulder out that way, put his shoulder up high, that would give him reason to have that up there. Yeah, I think they've all got double barrel shotguns. This guy's doing it one-handed. No, this will be just a six gun or something. Shane, point it at the car, will you? Point him at the car. <clears throat> the car's going to be over there, Shane. Alright, so his gun needs to go that way. I probably should have got reference right. It would have been a bit easier. Oh well. All right, so what have we got? We've got a double barrel shotgun. Another one here, a little bit lower, a little bit smaller. And then we've got some sort of a handgun here, but probably a big one. Uh, what's he wearing? A suit, I think. I think they're wearing suits.
that's reasonably convincing, I think. Let's get this guy's ears out here. Stick him out, maybe he's got sticky out ears. Little bald patch. Shiny head. Maybe he's got a comb over and his hair's blowing up. <laughs> Cute. Gaunt. I think we can put little suits and ties on him. Gun, you probably got one hand around there. This guy, I think you hold rifles somewhere on the barrel, do you? No, it's underneath, isn't it? Make this longer. I haven't quite got the angle right for this one. I'll have to cheat that in the in the final drawing or when I transfer this. But um, if there's a barrel there, and if I have his hand up there, Just go straight down actually. That's pretty good. This guy's got a big nose, I reckon. Gears and uh, maybe that's pretty good. And this guy, let's make him younger. Put a comb over or something. Oh, maybe he's got a ponytail. <laughs> there we go. smoking. A little pot belly. Doesn't take care of himself. So maybe not a t-shirt, maybe a, I mean not a suit, maybe a sort of a So if he's bald with a thing, he's got a thing, this guy's got to have something. What could he have? Maybe a nice big Elvis, Elvis haircut. There we go. All right. So that, 
should fit there now. So I'll just, just draw my car first. I can see that I think. Wait. Didn't I draw that more neatly? That's it, is it? Okay. All right, so that I think is the back of the car reasonably well. Bumper bar sticks out a little bit further. That looks pretty cool. Okay, now we bring in the gentleman. Ready to kill. Ah, oh, you silly bugger, I put it in the middle. Oh. Okay, this is the problem. Working a little bit in a broken fashion. So what I'm gonna have to do is just draw this further out to the left and then just slide it over in Photoshop later. Just to save me redrawing the car now. And I might even have to shift the car a little bit more as well. So I'll try to fit him just out there. All right, and that brings this edge to about here somewhere which is about nearly seventeen mils about there. Alright. So I just have to patch that later, it's no big deal. All right.
Boom. Might actually come over a little bit more. Give that guy a little bit more breathing space on the left. And I'll just slide the car a little bit to the right later. Okay, so I'll try to get a bit faster here, Shane. Boom, 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 boom. I'll give him a cigarette as well. Maybe they've all got cigarettes, eh? Why not? use a ruler for the for the guns because I want them to look really sort of you know hard edged so a ruler will help me with that oops if I get the lines in the right place it will hmm Come on guys. There we go. Oh, it's getting dark. Coming along. This guy looks pretty good. I like him. For a bad guy, he looks pretty cool. Now I've just got to tilt this gun around. 
Probably more there, doesn't it? Give me big hairy fingers. Something like that. And the young guy, 